It's Wednesday, April 6, 2011, and today we're going to be talking about a new version of Skype that just released for Linux today. I guess it's been a little over a year, actually about a year and three months, since Skype version 2.1 released for Linux. Today the 6th, like I said, Skype 2.2 beta, and we're going to put that in quotes because it's constantly in beta, has officially released. As you see here, it's codenamed Access Granted because they've added the Skype Access Access to Linux users. If we go over and look at that, Skype Access is, as they say, a quick and easy way to get online. If you have Skype credit, you can get online through Wi-Fi providers at over 200,000 hotspots worldwide. I don't know how useful that's going to be for a lot of people, but if you do regularly use Skype credit and you find a hotspot that actually accepts it, more power to you and awesome. It's great that it does work for Linux now. It's nice to have that as an additional feature. Looking at the other features that they've made available, we'll go ahead and look at the release notes. As you can see here, the main release notes are actually kind of sparse. The Skype access has been mentioned. You see you can connect to paid Wi-Fi hotspots, like I said. In addition, they've added support for call waiting and call holding. I, I don't spend a ton of time on Skype, so I don't have to worry so much about call waiting or call holding. But I do understand that having multiple calls incoming, it would be nice to be able to switch between them seamlessly. I did test this out for a minute earlier. I just talking to the Skype call testing service and the hold button does work as it's supposed to. In addition, you see here they've added easy conference call hosting. Uh, I guess it depends on how you look at it as to what you would consider easy. You just type slash go live token and you can invite other people to the call. Here is the type of link you would use. They say the same link will work on Windows and Mac. You see Skype 5.0 for Windows and Mac both support this. So very awesome that we're getting onto the same footing as some other uh, operating system versions are. They've also improved the audio video quality on calls and this is going to be the one that impacts the grand majority of people as far as I can tell. In the past whenever I've done anything on Skype and specifically the Skype call testing and you know just making the call it has sounded rough and I've tested it a few times just using headphones and it sounds so much better so much more clear. I'm gonna do that very quickly for you now just to, to let you sort of hear what I hear. Hello, welcome to Skype call testing service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be... And you see there, that does sound, in my experience and in my opinion, a lot more clear and a lot more concise, I guess, a lot closer, a lot better than, than it used to. It almost sounded like a cell phone call to me before. And it could have had a little bit to do with my connection. It could have a lot of things to do with it. But like they said, they did improve audio video, audio video quality. Uh, in doing a little bit of testing and looking around at the options, I did notice under the sound devices they do have some changes here. They've added this ability to connect to your pulse audio volume control if it detects you're using pulse. So that's a huge step forward in just making a consistent interface for Linux users, being able to connect to the local sound server and actually configure it. Other than that, the main API, the main interface, has not really changed. Sorry, I said API because this popped into my view. Uh, I don't remember seeing this in 2.1. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that might be something new. I, it's just something I don't spend a whole lot of time looking around in the options in Skype. But we do have the option here to allow and disallow programs to, to connect through Skype now. So I'm guessing that has something to do with the public SDK they made available. Uh, please do feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, though, in the comments section below. But basically, other than that, it, like I said, improved audio video quality on calls. Haven't had a chance to test out the video quality during a call other than just looking into the video options and seeing myself on the camera waving. But the video quality in the test menu there definitely looked improved to me. So again, that, that it could just be because they're saying that there's a difference. I'm thinking there's a difference, but this is where you guys do come in. Test out the new version of Skype if you can. Let me know how it works out for you. If you do want to install it on your system, if you're running a system that uses a PPA to pull down Skype, you probably already have the newest version. If you're running Arch Linux, it's already in the repositories. Otherwise, you can go to Get Skype, click on Linux, and then on the new page, you see Download Now, and you've got all these distributions you can select from. A lot of people will be choosing Ubuntu 10.4 Plus or Fedora or whatever else. I believe Arch actually pulls from the dynamic or static, not sure. But if you pulled from one of these two, it should give you a D package, yeah, uh, amd64.deb should be a very quick and very easy install for you. So if you are interested in trying this out, 
definitely give it a shot. Let me know if the performance has improved for you or not. This should actually help out significantly with me uh, working on the show that sucks with the show that sucks. If you haven't seen his channel, I do work on a weekly news series with him talking, uh, just sort of a talk show about Linux with uh, he and James McLean. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of good discussion over there, so I'll have a link to his channel in the uh, source code below. But like I said, give Skype 2.2 beta a try. It is a huge benefit, in my opinion, to have the Skype people working on the Linux client again, so huge thumbs up to them. Uh, still a bit of a shame that the client is nowhere near the functionality of the Windows or Mac client, but again, it is very nice to see that there are people actually working on it. Uh, a neat little feature here that I completely overlooked. If you click on the, uh, the developer name up here, it'll tell you about the blogger or about the developer working on whatever it is. Uh, here we go, this one specifically, Marco Camino, is a Linux UI developer at Skype working to solve small and large challenges for Penguin users every day. Awesome to see that Skype is definitely showing some love to the Penguin. So show them some love, download this latest beta, try it out, let me know what your experiences are in the comment section below. But that's all for today, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.